Welcome to the January broadcast of the industry's first twice monthly video talk show for system integrators, contractors, and consultants, sound and communications viewpoint. This month's topic is video conferencing. Our host is Gary Kay and her guest, John Sawyer. Welcome to the 2008 edition of Sound and Communications Viewpoint. I'm Gary Kay, and we're here today with John Swarrier to talk about video conferencing. Welcome, John. Thank you. Pleasure. Well, let's jump right in. Is uh, video here? We are, 2008. Is video conferencing uh, going to finally meet the hype? I think it is. I think video conferencing has finally met mission critical status. Uh, before, with standard definition video conferencing, it was just that. It was an application that was okay on a scale of one to ten. Maybe it was a seven. Well, what, what's what's the difference? What's what's mission critical status? Well, the difference is is that it, there's there's tremendous clarity. Um, there's it, it finally is a suitable substitute to actually being there. And I think with in, in the old days with standard definition, people really didn't feel like it was there, or, or people really didn't adopt it. I think I think the combination of the quality being so good and so strong that people now have adopted the technology as a suitable substitute. But are there a lot of, are there, are there real applications for high definition conferencing or is it just the fact, is it high def is what's making it sell or is it just the fact that the quality is finally what they've been saying for 20 years that it, that it has been? You hit the nail on the head. It's finally, it's finally met the mark. We've been talking about this technology for 20 years and it's always been a somewhat of a struggling industry. And now, Finally, it's meeting the hype. It's actually providing quality that people see as suitable. And I think the biggest piece there is that it's, you know, maybe the expectation is at home. You know, there was always this expectation you would, when, when you were watching television at home, why isn't, the, why, isn't this, why isn't it what I'm seeing on television when I'm watching television with my wife at home? The fact of the matter is now is the quality is as good as what people are seeing at home. So whether you're an executive or whatever that may be, whatever classification you may be, the technology is great. But, but, but I think the image quality is only one part of the equation. I mean, the user experience was so horrendous historically. Most people that we talked to over the years have, have uh, had bad first, second, and third experiences with video conferencing. So solving the quality, is that really the, the bellwether mm -hmm. to success, or did they fix the user interface? Well, I think, I think part of it is Part of it is the is the HD aspect of it, but the other part of it is the infrastructure. You know, the network capabilities now. The the, the idea that you can actually have uh, a video conference um, at, at close to a meg now over the public internet is is mind boggling, to, especially compared to three years ago. But three years ago, maybe we were utilizing ISDN, or maybe we were just dabbling into the internet. The quality was poor. Well, let's let's. let's uh it's obvious that you're saying that, that network IP-based conferencing Correct. is the... Okay. So in that vein, uh, taking a look at the commercial AV integrators, are they ready for IT-based video conferencing? Are they set up? Do they understand the network well enough? Or if they don't, what, what tools do they need? Well, it depends on what type of AV integrator you're talking to. If it's your standard plain Jane AV integrator that does primarily displays or whatnot, they probably aren't set up to understand infrastructure. That's where there are, there are different companies, companies like my own, that are first and foremost were video conferencing companies. We came from the video conferencing world. We sold endpoints, in essence. That's where we came from. As well, we understand the infrastructure piece of that. So, and what is that infrastructure? What, what's that, that intellectual property that the average AV integrator you feel doesn't have today? It's the understanding of basic networks, wide area networks, local area networks, and the infrastructure equipment to bring that all together in what we would call an enterprise solution. How do we make that, that, that enterprise solution work well? Are there management packages around that that make it work seamlessly? But it's the infrastructure which is, is truly the glue that holds these applications together. And uh, if you could give a, an AV integrator uh, some key advice if they're interested in getting into this new realm of video conferencing. Let's, let's actually let's look at it this. Let's say they did ten years ago and they were burned. Right. Right. The customer wasn't happy. The bad user experience. What What do they need to do now to make sure that doesn't happen again? What's In, What's the key advice? Network infrastructure, 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 and understanding of multi-point control units, management systems, gateways, gatekeepers, all centering or all revolving around this. IP-centric infrastructure that we that that's that we have a plethora of now. And, and and back in the first and second and reintroduction, maybe third generation of video conferencing systems, 
the problems didn't occur as much. The user interface experience wasn't as bad when you were when you had one brand talking to the same brand. Is that still the case? Do you still need? Is it just Polycom has talked to Polycom and Tamburg has talked to Tamburg, or are now they more universal in protocols? With standards-based technology, they, they basically all work together quite nicely, to a certain degree. Um, you know, talking heads, uh, video, you know, it's, it's really, you know, that's a piece of cake. People can, people can operate in that particular mode. There are applications such as content sharing, where if you start to share content as part of that video conference, there are challenges. Uh, but for the most part, talking heads video like this, it's pretty seamless. Okay, well, I want to hold that thought because I want to ask you a question regarding SD versus HD conferencing. Is there still a place for SD conferencing? Um, but before we do that, we need to uh, stop and take a break. This is Gary Kay, and you're watching Sound and Communications Viewpoint. Introducing our newest shooting star, the self-powered MM4XP miniature loudspeaker especially suitable for installations involving space limitations and visibility concerns. Flexible, easy to configure mounting options and the ability to easily reproduce both speech and music make the MM4XPs a perfect choice for fixed installations, theatrical presentations and portable corporate AV solutions. And of course, the MM4XPs exhibit the same high quality intelligibility and flat frequency and phase response for which Meyer Sound loudspeakers are known. Bosch Communication Systems, a business unit of Bosch Security Systems, is now one of the world's leading manufacturers and suppliers of professional audio, wireless, life safety, and communication equipment. Bosch Communication Systems offers complete system solutions for the world's most critical high-profile installations and events. Together, the future sounds secure. <laughs> 